Hi everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful easel step swing floating card. It's a few cards in one really. You've got the step element, you've got the easel card and then you've got this floating element here. Now this one does fold flat and I recommend that you fold it flat this way so that then when the person opens it, it kind of already goes into that shape and everything your folds all kind of stay nice and crisp whereas I've seen a lot of them are just flat like this and obviously once that's been in an envelope for a while those score lines are not going to be as sharp as you would like them to be so I'm going to be sending mine off like this now these ones are for Mother's Day but of course you can have it for any occasion that you like and you can see there they stand really nicely and you've got all the space on the back of this swing piece here to write your message so let me show you how to make it so this is a simplified version. So I actually was requested to do this tutorial by about seven different people over on the request section on my blog. I had a little look into it and I saw a tutorial by Debbie Henderson. And when I'd looked at a lot of this card style on Pinterest and things like that, I wanted to see if there was a more simplified way to do it. And this is what I've come up with here. So you want a piece of, you know, I'm doing a six by six version. So this is 12 by six. And along the 12 inch side, you want to score it six inches. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a square into this left hand side here. So this one here is about four by four, it's four and one eighth by four and one eighth, but four by four will be fine and that will give you a one inch side on all four sides there. So I'm going to just lay this one here, tack it in place. But if you don't have a die cutting machine, you could draw around something that's square and then just cut it out or you might have, you know, your trimmers. You can cut a square, four by four square in the middle and um, but by just die cutting straight in here I just already thought that that was a bit easy and most people you know that watch my tutorials will have a square die and a die cutting machine so I'm just going to run this one through now okay so you can see that's come away perfectly and you could use this piece now for the piece that's going to be floating but because I wanted to get as much prepped before the tutorial I've already got mine ready but keep that piece and um, you can use it for the middle part so now that's all cut we're going to do some scoring so pop it back into your scoreboard with this side on the left hand side and you're going to score at one and a half and just keep your stylus in the track until you get down to the other end okay and then at two again all the way down and then at three and a half all the way down now i have changed those score lines slightly from the live i wanted to have more height at the front so i've added an extra half inch to the front here so anybody that's watching and done the live that's what I've changed there so now we can fold and burnish the score line so you're going to fold your main six inch score line there in half so that's your you know your card blank there and then that next score line you want to become a mountain like so okay and then a valley and then the front one will become a mountain I'm just going to flip that over there just so I can get some nice burnished lines there and there is the card shape okay and you'll see now once we add our mats and layers they bring it up on the side there that's the shape that you should have next if you want to do some die cutting with this front piece here then I've pulled out my box number 15 by the Paper Craft Society or kit 15 and that's what I've used to decorate all of this. Now I believe the day this tutorial goes up they have an offer on the Paper Craft Society kits. I will link the kits below because if you are someone that's watched some of my tutorials and you enjoy the kits and you've been unsure whether to get one or not then today might be a good day to check them out. Again, I don't know how long the offer's running, so if you're watching this some months later, by then I imagine it will be gone and it will be while stocks last. But you might be able to get yourself a bargain. In this kit, there is this lovely edge die here. Now, it's not wide enough to cover the whole width. And during the live, and I was like, oh, I really want to use it. So I ended up just adding a little curve to the end. And that's what a lot of other people did as well. So I'm going to use that one there. And I've got myself here this yellow cardstock and I want this to become the matte layer here. So you'll see I've got this lovely gingham. If you don't want to do an edge, you might have a straight edge rather than a curved edge, but with just like a nice scallop detail or, you know, a different design altogether, or you just keep it completely normal, you know, as it is. It will look lovely with some nice mats and layers built up. But I do just want to 
add a little bit more this is going to be for mother's day so i'm going to go quite over the top so it's a six inch width card so i'm going to bring this down to five and three quarters i'm just going to cut that it's just a piece from my scrap and this is going to sit over here so you'll see already i've got a nice border either side but what i want to do first of all is just I'm only going to die cut, so I'm only going to run this half through. I mean, if you don't want to burnish your score lines yet, then wait till you add this piece in. And I'm going to line up that middle scallop roughly so it's in the middle of the card, right up as close to the end as I can get it. And I can just see, I've got about the same either side there. So I'm going to pop this there. And I'm just going to run just this piece through the die machine, then run it back and then reverse it back out again. You see now I've got this shape. And then all I did was just the die lay it down and I just drew around it. I'm going to sit it there just to get the same kind of curve and this was just you know a good way to just show you how you can extend you know some of the edge dies to fit you know bigger cards again just like so and then I'm just going to you could just cut it straight as well, you don't have to extend the, the shape of the, the curve there, but I did th think it was quite nice. Okay, so that's done. Then with this one, I'm going to lay the die again right at the end, just making sure I've got an equal amount. It would be slightly less each side now because this is slightly, not you know, slightly thinner, it's not as wide. And again, just going to die cut that end. Just use that die just to draw around the sides here. Okay, next I'm just going to open up the card and I'm going to lay this down and I'm just going to bring it down until I get a nice white border there. I think I'm going to bring that up a little bit higher. So, and then I'm just going to mark with my pencil about a quarter of an inch up from that score line. And I'm just going to cut that. Okay, so that's that piece. And because it's plain, I'm going to use this embossing folder just to add a little bit of texture and I'm going to use some of my Barkle paste over the top of this as well. So now I'm just going to run this through my machine. This is the X-Cut Wicker design. Okay, so that's that one all done. Let's get this out of the way. So now I'm going to stick this one down onto the base there so that will start to strengthen that. That's that all done. Next I've got this piece of acetate and the acetate comes in the kit as well. And this is one and a half by just under the width of the card here. So this is six inches. So I've done this to five and seven eighths, just so you don't have anything poking out the sides. And you'll see I've added double-sided tape here. Now this doesn't have to be acetate either. This could be cardstock, but if you want to have that floating look, then use the acetate because then you can't see it. I've just added some tape to the front ends here. So I'm going to stick that down first, so just on the front, just on the end pieces. And you're going to turn this over you're going to butt it right up to the score line here, but it's going to stick onto the f these, this front piece here. That's what you're sticking it onto. But I'm leaning it against the back piece first just to get it in place. So I just want to make sure I've got it in the middle there. And then I'm just going to pinch over. Get it right up the top there and that will help balance the card. Okay, so you'll see what we've got there. And then I've cut... This piece here, which I've also already embossed, and this one here measures three and three quarters squared. So I'm going to take the tape off of the front, and then if you open up the card, lay it all down completely flat. This piece you want to sit perfectly in that square so you've got an even border. I think that's about right. Like so. And now just reinforce those score lines again. Now when you bring this up, once we add our stopper, this piece will kind of just float there. It just, it just stays where it needs to be. So I'm now going to flip this over and I've cut the same piece again, the same size, the three and three quarters. And then I've put a matte layer on there, which is three and a half by three and a half in the yellow. And then I've got three and a quarter by three and a quarter again in white, so you can write your message. And I'm just going to sit this perfectly over the top, like so, and it will stick to that. You could put more glue on there if you want, but I think that's enough. But now again, once the stop is in place, you can see how that all looks. So now that's all left for me to do is add the stopper and decorate. So I've already got my stopper ready here and I've put some foam on the back. 
and this one just says Happy Mother's Day. So now you just want to kind of bring this up as far as you want. I'm going to come up a little bit higher here because I think I'm going to do some more floral detail on the bottom. So I'm going to bring it down as far as that will still kind of hang there. So I'm going to go about there I think. Okay so again if I just bring that up there you can see that shape. Once we start adding more onto this it will weight it down. So for the, all the mats and layers now you can do this again slightly differently if you want. I did it so that I had the short strips in the middle here and then longer ones coming down either side. You might want to have one long strip along the bottom and then shorter pieces here on the side. So I'm going to show you that way in the sizes but again you know you might want to change it. So you'll want these two pieces for the front and the back. Every piece here is three quarters of an inch wide but the length of these are four, so two of that size, and then two, again, that three quarters wide by two and a quarter. And then I have four pieces here, which are one and a quarter, again, by three quarters wide. And these will cover all of the sides here. So these smaller ones are going to go in here and here, okay like so. Those longer ones will go in the middle here and in the middle on the back and then those two will go on the sides on the back. So I'm going to get them all stuck down. Okay, next I want to add some shine before I stick the flowers down. Now I should have probably not added that next, but this is clear and it will just make everything sparkle, so I'm not worried. So this is amazing stuff and this is the Cosmic Shimmer Glitter Kiss. And this colour here is Frosty Sparkle and it will just add a beautiful sparkle. You can see, hopefully it's picking it up, all the sparkle on the sponge there. So I'm just going to soften my sponge because it can dry up. They do say you should rinse it, I don't. I just find that as soon as you apply it back into the medium, the whole sponge starts to soften again. So I'm just kind of popping the sponge in there so you've got kind of a slope and you, you always rub the excess off. You, a little bit goes a very long way. So but that's nice and soft again now. And I'm just going to, it's nice on embossed surfaces because it picks up you know, all the raised surface. And again, you're not probably going to really see too much of this, but I will bring it up closer in a moment. But I'm just brushing it over. Like I said, it doesn't matter. There's all different colours, but if you've got the clear, it's like a sparkle pen, but in a paste. And it dries very quickly as well. I would also cover this back side here with maybe some either more white or some pattern paper. So it doesn't matter that it's hitting that sentiment. I'm going to brush over it a little bit. If I bring that up now, you should be able to see, there we go, all the shine. It's still drying a little bit, but you've got all that sparkle on the bottom. And I'm also just going to I lay it down flat again. Like I said, do these things probably before you put it all together, but I'm just showing you that you can still do it once it is. You can go over it, so if you do want it thicker, then by all means do so. And again, if I just bring up the front here, you've got that beautiful iridescent. There we go, you can just about see it there. It just adds so much sparkle to the card, it looks absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to give that a few more minutes to dry, and then I'm going to start sticking down all of my flowers here. And I'm going to follow the same arrangement of this one. I've got a different butterfly, I've got all the leaves there. Now I've inked these up, and I've shaped them, I've added you know, all the stamen detail and some little gems in the middle of them. And if you want to see all of that in real time, then I will link the Facebook Live in the description box below so you can follow that one. But I'm now going to get the heat gun on and get that all stuck down.
Okay, so that's now all stuck down. I did end up having to do another pink flower because I realised I wanted a pink one here and a pink one down here because it looked nice against the yellow. So rather than have three yellows together, I used that extra one and popped it there instead. So slightly different arrangement to this one here, but I think it still looks really, really pretty. Next, I'm just going to finish it off with some sparkle pen on the butterfly and all the leaves. Now you could also add the Cosmic Shimmer Sparkle, but I'm going to use this now and again if I just bring this one up you should see the sparkle on the butterfly all here. So I didn't do it on the leaves actually so I'm, I might not on this one, we'll see. I'm just going to now cover this. Okay, so I've just left the sparkle on the butterfly. If it darkens the cardstock don't worry, it's just because you've gone a bit heavier with it and it will dry clear eventually but that's now very shiny and then I'm going to add some Nouveau drops so you can see where I've added them all here so I've done the butterfly trail there and then I've just added them in in any little gaps that I've got there now this is now an embossed surface so it's not as smooth as that one so I'm just going to place them on the kind of raised areas on Okay, so I'll just bring that up. Now I will add some more to this piece here, but I don't want to keep it upright for too long because otherwise those dots will drop. But you can see there what I've done. And I just need to die cut another stamen and an embellishment for that pink flower there. But you just so you can see everything there. So I'm going to lay that one back down. So I'll just bring that one up again, nice and close there so you can see. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I hope you like this simplified version. And I think by doing it this way as well, it's nice to then be able to add the acetate so it gives you that floating effect. I've thoroughly enjoyed putting these together. I can't wait to see your versions. If you haven't and you are on Facebook, if you head over to Mixed Up Crafters, we've got a Facebook group there and you can share anything that you make following my tutorials. And there's a lovely group of um, men and women there sharing all of their wonderful designs. Also coming up now will be a couple of other kind of stepper cards, easel cards that you might enjoy and I'll share some playlists throughout the video as well that you might want to watch after this video and if you haven't subscribed and you've enjoyed today please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!